The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and we have a very special show for you today. We have a, a couple of uh, artists that uh, have uh, made a, a film and gotten an award for it, right? Uh, we have uh, we have Sherry Chaplin, Kaplan. Kaplan, very close, and of course Tom Cookham. Bingo. <laughs> I got you right. Yeah, that's right. Right. Well, welcome to the show. Part. It's Thank it's you. actually called the 48 Hour Film Project, which uh, sounds like a, a blast. It is a blast. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Do you want to do that? Yeah, no sure. Um, so I've actually, this is Sherry's first one, um, but uh, I've done now, I think, 12 of these. So uh, some with another team. Uh, this was the first one uh, where I actually struck out and kind of started my own team for it, um, working with uh, the folks from Infinite Canvas, uh, Jason, who couldn't be here, um, and Charlie. But... Uh, what we did was enter in this competition. There's about 140 cities around the world that have this, although each one is its own competition. Um, we entered the New Hampshire competition, and basically Friday night they give you uh, an assignment, um, some details around a story that you need to write. You then need to shoot that uh, and edit a film and hand in a four to seven minute film uh, by Sunday evening. Within 48 hours. 48 yeah. hours. It's technically yeah. 48 and a half, but yeah. So here you, you're scrambling. You, you don't know what the plot is, right? And they give you this this assignment. Mm -hmm. all, all you need is the equipment to do it, right? You're just yeah. a camera, any and, kind of camera, and a crew. Yep. yep. Now, my first, actually, my first experience with this, we have somebody local, Dan, uh, uh, he, Dan Young. He's one of our, our um, engineers here. He did something about the cantaloupe, and I watched him as he's making this uh, these attack cantaloupe that were, you know, they were invading Earth. <laughs> it was just, it was funny. It was funny, but I could just see that the, the the laughter the and, and the intensity at the same time, we got a deadline, and you got to create a story. Uh, was there a panic when, when you got the, 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 the plot? I think that all of us were prepared for how quickly we were going to have to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us wanted that deadline, which is why we were attracted to this project. You know, like you were saying before, that you wanted to just make something, you know, like just use those filmmaking muscles. Mm -hmm. So we were really ready to just come in and do it for fun and see what we could get in 48 hours. Um, and this was your first attempt? It was my first attempt. What drew you to this? So the fact that it was going to be a finished product is what mm -hmm. made me really excited about it. Because normally I act in plays, mm -hmm. and so there's, you know, two months of rehearsal yeah. and then the show and it's over. And so then you've, depression. you've done something. And then depression. And then you have to find a new show. <laughs> It's, it's, I know what you're talking about. I've done a number of them myself. So with this, it's like you do it. It's done. You have the movie. Yeah. You know, and I've never had that experience before, really. I've done like a couple little short things and some things that didn't quite make it to a full production. Right. So this is happening all around the country. Is that right? All around the world, really. All around the world. And, uh, of course, we had it here in New Hampshire. And th this is where you took this particular challenge. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. brought it to... Mass did, did the thing, then came back up here and, and submitted. And you can do that anywhere at any time that they're having this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, first off, to, just to be clear about it, um, even though there are 140-ish uh, cities around the world that have this competition, um, each one is its own competition. So the Boston one took place in May. The New Hampshire one took place in June. The Providence one took place in uh, July. Portland, Maine was in August. So... You know, at any, if you think about it, 140 cities, 52 weekends in a year, right? At any given time, there's like three-ish competitions going on. Um, probably not at Christmas or Easter or whatever, but um, 
they are separate competitions, and all you need to participate is a person uh, who can uh, physically be at the kickoff location, mm -hmm. and you need to physically hand in a copy of the film uh, on Sunday night. What, kind, what are some of the standards? Obviously, they, they want it, they've got some standards that, that when they submit it, you know, is it rated PG, G? Uh, I, I mean, they, yeah. they don't want any kind of uh, obscene content or anything like that. Okay. I forget exactly how they word it. Um, so. There are some guidelines there. Right. Generally, though, I mean, you can swear or whatever. There's no, okay. you know, uh, they, they tend to have a, in the larger competitions, they'll have like a, a family-friendly screening group. Sure. Mm. Um, where, can, where do they screen these? Um, so in Boston, they screen them in um, the Kendall Square Cinema, and so that's a kind of an indie theater there. That's pretty cool. Uh, this year, they had, for New Hampshire, they had them in the um, uh, Cinemagic in Hooksit. Um, so, so they also, yeah, you know, go get theater. your popcorn, you're going to watch a movie you just cool. made. Well, that's going to be a blast, right? Yeah. It well, was really cool. fun for yeah. everyone to sit in the same room. And, you know, we were all there for the awards, too. Yeah. So that's what we were thinking about. And then I got there, and I was like, wait a minute. I get to watch the movie that we made with all these other people who haven't seen it. Like, that's really exciting, oh, you know? So as it's playing, do you hear comments? Do you hear giggles? Do you hear... Uh, hopefully you don't hear too much noise, but you do... You feel the, the reaction from the audience, right? you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do you, because you're with your peers, uh, do you ever get any negative vibes that say, ah, oh, yeah, you're right. I really stunk. <laughs> 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 well, oh my gosh, they noticed that or something to that effect. I'll be honest. I mean, I've done a lot of these and generally, uh, you know, the team I used to work with uh, generally makes much more lighthearted, funny films and they're very, they're very funny and they get people to laugh and, you know, having worked with them and with other teams, generally everybody tries to make a pretty funny movie. And, right. Um, Was the, yours funny? This one, I, no, no, quite intentionally. Safe to say no. <laughs> uh, not depressing or anything, but I mean, it was more thoughtful and, you know, meant to make people think. But, um, and that was, I, I, I immediately regretted that <laughs> was sitting in the screening because, you know, when you make something funny, uh, it's a lot less pressure. It's less of a risk in a sense in oh, that yeah. you immediately get validation if the audience laughs, sure. right? Mm -hmm. The joke comes up, the audience laughs at it. You're like, hey, great, it worked, right? We succeeded. And With this one, if they're walking out crying, everything's good, right? I guess so. Um, but no, it was uh, it was a very long seven minutes. I was just sitting there, and oh, there, you could hear a pin drop right. in the theater, which was, I mean, it That's ended what up, you want, though. That ended up being a good thing, yeah. People, I think, were engaged and responded to it. But, you know, that was a very, that was a very unique thing for me to feel, because I'm so used to yeah. it. So what was, the topic? Stuff. what was the topic of this? this? One of you. So they give you your genre. Um, they give you a line of dialogue that you have to use. They give you a character. And they give you a prop. So those are all the things that get you started writing. And our genre was film de femme, which basically means strong female lead. And they, I loved what they said about it. They didn't want us to just take a woman and put her in a male role. They wanted something that is you know, representative of female complexity. So Margaret we spent, Thatcher or something like that? Yeah, something, something Gwilda that, Meyer, yeah, yeah, dignified, mm -hmm. right? So we had a long discussion as a group about what direction we wanted to go with that. And, you know, it was very late. <laughs> and eventually we hit on the idea that we wanted to tell a story that is only a woman's story. So what makes a character strong? How they face adversity. So this is really a movie about all of the pressures on this woman and how she deals with those pressures. And that's what makes her strong rather than, you know, um, she's actually kind of passive in the movie. So it's an interesting kind of strength, I think. It was, um, it was kind of a last second direction change. We had discussed a bunch of much lighter concepts. Mm -hmm. So 7 p.m. is when they hand, they give you your assignment, basically. So I was at the kickoff, uh, and we were meeting down in Boston. Uh, so the whole team was there. I kind of called back with the, you know, the parameters. People started brainstorming. Um, I drove back down there, and, um, you know, for really like two and a half or three hours, we just brainstormed various ideas, just concepts, you know. And there were a few that we liked. Uh, and then we just paused and said, yeah, let's, like, this is actually a pretty 
interesting genre. Like, what could we really do with it that's meaningful? And then, then we kind of settled on this story, and pretty immediately, I feel like people were really on like, board oh, with it. Oh, yeah, let's do that. We could like, tell that there was some was so need different. to it. Yeah. So. I was just going to say, how do you get everybody to agree? How many people were in the decision making? I think there were nine of us. It was like nine or ten of us, yeah. And uh, you yeah. had how much time to, to, to agree? So once we came, well, <laughs> what we did was we. Not much. I, I don't know. It, it, so this was my first time working with this group, and it was great in that. I felt like there was a lot of uh, energy, and I didn't think it was hard to sell anybody on the idea. Everybody really Who latched takes the onto lead? it. You? No, I mean it was. It felt pretty organic. Yeah. Like, Interesting. We just said, "Hey, how about this?" And then somebody would say, "Or or this or this," and you could just tell how people reacted to that. Nice. Right. If if people reacted to it with energy, it was like, "All right, let's continue to build up." So you're saying yeah. this is the first time you worked with a lot of these people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and how did you come together? And uh, did you all volunteer for the same team? How did that work out? So um, I guess just to summarize through the team, so I, I had worked with uh, a different team for the Boston 48 Hour, and in that uh, first round screening group there, I met uh, a couple actors from one other group, uh, and then I met Jason and Charlie from Infinite Canvas, who actually, they were kind of actually the bulk of this group, I'd say. Yeah. Um, they, they knew you and yep. Eric and Jared. Um, so they, Infinite Canvas probably pulled in the most, the most people, but uh, it was kind of three different previous teams that kind of morphed into one here mm -hmm. um, for, for this project. What was, were you the star of the show? No. Um, so something that was really interesting about our process was we all came together and then based on kind of people's skills and what they were drawn to and what seemed to fit best, those were the roles they took on. So I came in thinking I was just going to be one of the actors, and I was just going to help out brainstorming because I'm also a writer. So you know, it was just like, let's see what I can contribute. And then it ended up that when we split off into groups to try to like really start writing out some scenes, that we we were in a room together and it just seemed Jared, like yeah. it worked. You know, so it was kind of like you did what was working, mm -hmm. and you didn't try to say, but I want to do this. If this is working, you just have to go with it because you don't have time right. to reassign the roles. You know, well, Who was the main character? Uh, Andrea Sweeney is, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know actually where she, I think she goes to Emerson. Yes, she does. Yeah. Um, and I just happened to bump into her in the theater after the Boston uh, competition, and uh, I, I had acted in that film, so she recognized me, and we started talking there. Uh, and her boyfriend is uh, a great actor, uh, Liam McNeil. Um, so the two of them are kind of the, I guess, the main character. I yeah. mean, she's, she's the main character, but uh, he plays the, the husband. Um, and he has probably the second most significant role, I'd say. Yeah. What was the hardest part of, of bringing uh, the, main, the main topic together? How, how did you make it all... Chill. I, I feel like the hard thing is always to write scenes that have believable dialogue and that feel real. Um, and what we did to, I, I've taken this approach sometimes before with limited success, but what we did was we, we had maybe nine or ten of us there, so we split into three groups in different rooms of the apartment. Um, and then we basically said, all right, come up with, you know, seven scenes that would happen if a person was in, in this situation. Is it a phone call with her sister? Is it, you know, she's at the grocery store and, you know, notices something? Or um, basically, what are, the, what are the real things that would happen in real life? And, and what are the points that we want to get across and how would they fit into those scenes? Mm -hmm. So everybody came back together and we just had all this content. And it was interesting. Some people had the same ideas. Some people had uh, conflicting ideas, right? But that forced us to really hammer out the story and the reasons for why we had chosen um, you know, the scenes and uh, the scenes we had and what would be revealed in each of those and how it would be revealed. So were you running from one place to another to, all right, pack up, let's go. We got to get this place. Do we get enough? You know, you don't. That always happens. That happens, right? <laughs> how many places did you go? Uh, primarily three. We shot some at my office. Yeah. There was some at my apartment. And then um, some of this takes place. Uh, so the character we had to use was Alexis or Alan Fleming, a long distance runner. So that's, uh, that's the main character, Alexis. Um, so there's like a running path near my house we were using, and then it was back to my apartment again for the mm -hmm. last couple scenes. So you gotta be creative yeah. about how you, you use, use your space. You have. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, I think it was a, 
it was a, way, way back, there was a show, um, I think there were about 13 men it was called, or something about, you know, they were all, it was just a jury. 12 Angry 12 Men. 12 Angry yeah. Men, there you go. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. on 30. That was a great movie. And they yeah. just stayed in that room. Yeah. yeah. That's, that was amazing stuff, but uh, I mean, that's what you had to work with. You got one room, that's it. It's all dialogue at that well, point. Well, and that's based on a play. Right. So what's an easy play to put on? Mm -hmm. You know, you're just in the black box, and you have the table, and that's all you need. Yeah, it, but the camera would go in and out on certain facial expressions, or the mm -hmm. sweat, the, the yeah, just little things that, oh, yeah, it looked very believable. And so you try to do that in your, your film, right? So it's only seven minutes in... Yeah, so the, uh, it's like 6.50, I want to say. Um, the requirement is four to seven minutes. So what do you get when you win? Um, so, uh, well. An award. Yeah, an award. <laughs> so Which is fun. A big check, uh, <laughs> a, a contract. Some of, some of the larger cities do have some cash prizes and, uh, you know, trophies or whatever. Some of the smaller cities are certificates or whatever. But the one thing in common is that if you win your regional competition, then your film gets advanced to the international round where it competes against the... 140 or so from around the world um, and uh, so yeah so it now I can see you going from one place to another and scrambling and all that now that it's over do you scramble to the next one are you are you, are you pumped to, to, to get the next one so yeah. I, I'd say absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm disappointed that it's another year before we do this but um, so you I forget you were busy with something, the weekend of oh, Providence. Oh, the Providence one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, I worked with um, Liam again and um, also Mike D'Angelo for um, uh, the Providence one. So we came in second there. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Liam won Best Actor there. And actually, Andrea won Best Actor for Best New Actress. Hampshire. So the mm -hmm. couple in that, they now each have one. Yeah. Um, do you want to do a comedy next time, or do you think you want to try something serious It again? depends what we get, right? I mean, we could draw yeah. romance, we could draw horror, we could draw a silent film, right? It's, it's I would really, love to do a silent film. Yeah, I mean, we, did, we just did it for Portland, actually, so. Uh, we have a, 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 a gentleman who owns the Hippo here, in, or one of the owners of the Hippo here in New Hampshire. He actually puts up silent movies, <laughs> and he plays the music for them. And he plays oh, the that's audience. so fun. Yeah. I love what that. What a cool they idea, used to do right? that, I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. Well, he'd listen to the reactions of the the audience as they're following the silent movie. And I guess there's a real uh, wealth of, of silent films that w we've never seen, mm. you know, that, that weren't popular. But uh, he puts them out there and, and, he, and he plays the organ or the piano. And I think that's just a, a neat way to, oh, what, a, what a nice date, right? What a cool, Does what a cool night Does he improvise it? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's very cool. Yeah. I know that the, the Coolidge Theater. The Coolidge does that. They'll, they'll do that I once in a while. I still haven't seen it. I'm yeah. dying Like to with a full that. orchestra sometimes, they'll yeah. play like a... I think you just, people just from this is a one-man show. Yeah. It may be a keyboard or... Yeah, or, I mean, same idea, yeah, right? That's it's great. pretty neat because right for a long time, they, were, they thought, right, there would never be speaking pictures, so... In color, too, on top of that, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Well, and that's, that's just generally a really cool thing to talk about. Uh, the technology that's out there now, it is so accessible for people to, to make films now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, people actually do these competitions with their iPhone. That's not oh, yeah. what I would recommend, but it works. I mean, you can do that now. And I mean, 10, 15 years ago, that was just not a possibility. My, uh, yeah. my stepdaughter, Kylie, uh, she'll have uh, sleepovers. She's got the iPad. What do you want to do? Oh, pff, well, I know. I'm, they're going to make a, a movie upstairs, and they're yeah. going to have all kinds of... And they'll, it's, it's a blast, and you can hear them giggling for hours, mm -hmm. and then it gets quiet. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 and they come down and say, you want to see what we made? Mm. That's a great thing. And yeah. I remember when I was a kid, what we had the tape recorder, yep. and we were pretending to be uh, announcers, and we'd be laughing our, our we'd be laughing silly. We, 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 <laughs> right? We're on TV. We'd be laughing, <laughs> our, we'd be laughing silly, and it, it was fun. But this sounds like a, a real fun project. Does it cost you money to be part of this? I think the early bird is 140 bucks. And then uh, I think that goes up to, I don't know, it's 170 For each person getting involved? Or no, involved no, that's for or... the team. That's for the team. Yeah. So it's not too bad, um, you know, for a team of 10 people or whatever, right? It's not bad. Um, there's no restrictions on how small or large your team is. Um, so it could be, you know, I generally, I don't know, I work with teams of 10 to 15. Okay. It's just worked out that way. That's not on purpose. It seems like it's hard to get a ton of people to all commit. To forty-eight hours, yeah, right. At the same time, yeah, and, have, and, and be focused on one thing that, uh, and uh, you know, there's always personality conflicts and things like that, but nothing like that in this particular. No, this was a no, dream. No, this um, was amazing. Everyone I, really got along, like without even knowing each other. Most of them, right, knowing each other before, you know, it just we really gelled. So, if you're bored, 
get involved with uh, making some type of a uh, film. Yeah, work. I'd recommend it. It's, yeah. uh, I think it's an awesome way to spend a weekend. And it's uh, not it's, everybody has to be technical either, right? You just got to show no. up and be a body that can. Yeah, I mean, you might just need somebody to help even with getting food, or you know, that was that's an important part of it, right? Feeding the team because um, there's yeah, people. Yeah, if you who show need... up, you'll get a job handed to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you go around the clock? Yes. Right. So you're as, getting as tired as at the possible. end. As much as possible, you're getting really. So tired. when do we? Okay, well, walking through the timeline, uh, we finished the concept around midnight or so, maybe a little bit later, um, and then there was some detailed, yeah. like actually writing of the script that probably finished around four ish. Right. Other people left, and we stayed right. until right. Yeah, pretty late. I think I left at two. Are they memorizing their lines, or you got it a little bit more? They're short enough scenes that okay. you can generally they can kind of yeah. look it over and get it. Yeah, in a few tries. So then, what was it? Then maybe nine o'clock. We we showed up Saturday morning, mm -hmm. started setting up at the first location. We finished filming a little after midnight, the last scene, and then. Uh, one person who hadn't been as involved in the production, she began kind of ingesting all the footage and oh, the um, editing is the hardest thing. Well, the thing is now a lot of a lot of people shoot with these SLR cameras mm -hmm. that you record the audio separately, like you used to with film, um, and that means you need to sync the audio and the video up, uh, which is just another thing you need to do in that in that forty-eight hour window. And so that's she, supposed to be helpful. Well, it's for better audio quality. Yeah. So, really. Yeah, the SLRs don't have great. Audio recording capability, so um, they but they have a much much better picture. Interesting That's the trade off you make. So we're going to be seeing a clip very very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. at, at the end of the show, or uh, will it be the whole thing, or will it be a nope, uh, uh, just the trailer. Just the trailer. trailer. Yeah. Interesting. And where can people find this? This uh, is it on YouTube? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's available it's on, on YouTube. YouTube. I'd say the easiest way to find it because uh, I don't know what the direct link is, but if you were to look for um, empty room. Empty uh, room. Uh, then, like New Hampshire, forty-eight hour film project. Or Empty room, like. New Hampshire, forty-eight hour film project. Yeah, that yeah. should turn it up. And uh, so, that's cool. Are you in it? Are you doing anything in particular, or are you behind the camera? I was he was directing, and writing. So yeah, writing and directing. A little bit of editing. Action, right? It's great. Everybody does a lot of everything. I mean, uh, Jason, I thought did an awesome job with the cinematography. I was really pleased with how this one looked. I thought mm -hmm. he just. I think a big thing about cinematography is using the camera movements and everything like that to tell the story. And I thought he did an awesome job of that. There was a lot of camera motion and just great framing, use of focus, all that. Jason is very creative and good at that. So that's that's really cool. Yeah. Is there a so okay? So it, it's on YouTube. Is there a, is there a website for this for this uh, film project? Uh, uh, there is for the film project, and um, also. The partner company that Jason runs, mm -hmm. InfiniteCanvas.com, uh, will be putting the film up for people to see as well. All right. Well, congratulations. Any final Thank thoughts? Thank you. Um, I would encourage people to make films. I think it's an awesome way to tell stories, and uh, it's you know the New Hampshire 48-hour film project is a great way to get involved in that and get your feet wet. So. Right. So sitting around the campfire and telling stories—that's all blasé. Let's make a film. <laughs> Right. Sure. Well, it pushes you outside of your comfort zone, too, because they give you your genre, and they give you all these things that you have to do. So you make something you never knew. You Are you going made. back to theater? I will, but I'll also be doing more films Yeah. because this was really exciting. Okay, well, we're going to take a minute and just uh, look at that clip real quick. Toast. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, to my new job promotion and uh, to the new mom. Wow. Cheers, guys. Cheers. To you guys. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Somehow. You're so lucky. This is the perfect time to have a baby. I just keep waiting to feel that mommy bliss, and I don't. You know how it is when you have kids and they just kind of take over everything? <laughs> it's a gift for the mother of my child. We can't afford it. Thank you very much for coming back on uh, Gate City Chronicles, and we wish you the best. We hope to see you again. Maybe you'll be in the big pictures and uh, doing uh, some, you know, 10-minute movies or something. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like too much. Yeah, yeah. well. We'll see. Great but job. thank you for having us. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.
And thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles. Until next week. Thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles, and we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark, the Dean of Clean. You can reach them at 603-521-7657. If you need your carpets clean, call Aardvarks. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.